Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and today I am doing sort of a, um, I don't know what you call it, it almost sounds like an advertisement for another YouTube channel. The YouTube channel I'm talking about is Mike Deacon, and I know many of you know who Mike Deacon is. Mike Deacon's been around for quite a while, he makes quality YouTube videos, and uh, he does a lot of things with mixed media, and his videos, if you've never seen Mike Deacon on YouTube, on his channel, you must go there because he is a source of great inspiration, uh, lots of techniques, and his videos are very professionally done. But recently, Mike had a tragedy happen within his home. His home uh, was broken into, and he and Ian's Mac laptops were stolen. Uh, I believe they lost a phone as well, and they lost some cash. And this must be very devastating to Mike because he basically uh, runs his business from his home and his computer is probably very central to what he does. I know it's very central to his videos that he creates. There is a way to support Mike uh, to help him out over this period of time because I think the insurance company is giving him a really hard time, which is not unusual because insurance companies love to take your money. They don't love to give you any of it back. Um, Mike does have an angels uh, system where you can donate whatever you like to him whenever you want to and he uses this money to put towards producing his videos and being a YouTube creator myself I know how much time and how much cost that can co that can amount to so that is one way you can support Mike right now during his very difficult time another way you can support him however is go to his store his shop it's on his website mikedeaconart.com and he sells journals he sells digital downloads he sells stencils and laser cuts now I've ordered many many products from Mike Deacon over the years and I always find them to be of the highest quality reasonably priced shipping if it's something that uh, is a physical item um, is very reasonable uh, it is coming from the UK after all and it comes in a very timely fashion so I've always been very impressed by anything that I have purchased from Mike's uh, website and I do purchase a lot of his digi downloads and so I got thinking the other day how could I contribute help out in some way with Mike's problem he's having right now and since I download a lot of his digi downloads, and I've decided that I would create a journal as a tribute to Mike and to show you what you can do with his digi downloads. Now, right now, journal making is all the rage, it's the trend. Mike himself has made quite a few beautiful, beautiful, and elaborate journals. I decided to make my own journal, and this started off by using some of Mike's packaging. Now, let me get one of these packages to show you how I made this journal. When you order one of Mike's stencils, it comes in a package that has this as the insert. And it has his name and his website all in here. And the stencil sits in this little folder. And it's very nicely presented to you. And on the back, he has some things about the stencils as well. But this is very nice packaging, and I have a thing about making journals and uh, tags and mixed media backgrounds out of packaging because packaging in itself is sometimes really nice artwork. So I decided to use this basic form for creating a journal because I had quite a few of these that I've saved up for my purchases of his stencils. So you can see it naturally has a fold here. This could become a pocket. And this is another page. And so you can lay them together and create signatures. And that's exactly what I did. So I'm going to show you the journal that I have created out of Mike Deacon's Digi Downloads and his packaging. And I want you to know that everything, with the exception of this ribbon and the elastic uh, strapping that I used to hold in the signatures, everything else are all Mike Deacon products. So the cover you can see, I used some of his digi download paper. It was a map to cover the back 
the spine or the front, the back, and the spine. And I also included some of, uh, cut out some of his digi downloads. Um, and he has all kinds of these and they're on different themes and they're kind of quirky, some of them. And that's one of the things I really like about them. So I cut these out and I created this title page. I glued down the ribbon and that acts as my closure. And as I said, I used black elastic. Um, I don't you call this, it's not a rubber band. It's, it's an elastic, um, string basically. Uh, and I punched and then put in, uh, little holes right here for each one of my signatures. And I reinforce them using, um, eyelets. Now again, the, okay, the one other thing that isn't Mike Deacon's are the eyelets, okay? But everything else is. So let's open it up and I'll show you how this turned out. So here's the first section. Now you can see the cover uh, inside is also covered with Mike's paper as well. Now this is a paper cover, the whole thing. You could uh, put it around um, poster board or uh, what they call a book board, that kind of thing. I didn't. How did I, I made it a little stronger though. This is several layers of cardstock that I laminated together uh, using my Xyron, which is a gluing system. And I also reinforced the spine on the inside. You can see a little bit of a shine there with uh, clear packing tape. So that just makes it a little stronger especially on the spine since the spine is going to be open and closed quite a bit and the signatures are going to be opened and pulled in and out of here. So I took his digi downloads including this. Now I did alter this background by adding the word notes. And I just picked these up. They're JPEGs. I just picked them up into uh, Photoshop elements and added my wording. Each of these signatures is made up of four of these. And what I did was I took some of my uh, Deacon stencils and I just randomly picked some colors and colored each one of the pages just so I had a bit of a background to work with. Now, these inserts from his stencils are on a very glossy type of paper. So any kind of ink that's water soluble is just going to beat up. And I mean like Distress Inks by Tim Holtz. So I used Ranger's Archival Inks because they are waterproof when they dry and they don't bead up. I also went around the edges of all of the pages with some stays on brown ink. Again, I use the stays on because it's permanent, it's water soluble, or it's not water soluble, sorry, and it also um, will not smear once it's dry. On here, it's permanent. You can see that I utilized his little flap, this flap right here. I put a little bead of glue on each end and it now became a pocket. And I didn't cover over his name on here because this is a Mike Deacon journal. And some more of his digi downloads from one of his sets. Um, I took them, I cut them out, and I just rounded the corners with a corner rounder, aged them a little bit with some more um, stays on brown ink and they just slip right in there. And this is another spot where somebody can write. So you have note pages, you have these cards. I added some of his digi downloads to each one of these pages, again, just to break up the blankness of it, even though I already have a stencil design on it. Um, but you could write on these now. However, this is a glossy surface, so you'd have to write on it with something like a fine point Sharpie or some kind of pen like that. Otherwise, it'll probably just bead up. But you could also add a picture in here if you wish to as a background. It could be any kind of journal you wish. So you can see I even added some of his uh, phrases that he includes in his digi downloads to some of the pages as well and more of his little graphics. And I changed the color scheme slightly and added things all the way through. So this is the first set of signatures. And there's another pocket. And as I said, there are four of these in each signature set. So you're getting quite a few pages. Now, that's one signature. And you'll also notice that I added a tab. Again, this comes from one of his tags in a digi download. And I just added it to the end 
and I put I have three signatures so each one has a, div a divider on it and you could simply write or use a label maker or something whatever this section is for. In the second section I did the same process throughout and you'll notice that uh, on the note pages these are the backs of these I didn't want the writing so I just covered them up with one of his digi digi downloads. Now I did have to alter the size of these slightly to make them fit but that's easy enough to do in a in a graphics program not a problem. Um, you may also be wondering how I managed to fussy cut all of these. Well I didn't. I have a Cricut Maker. Cricut Maker is wonderful. What I do with Mike's digi downloads is I pick them up in Cricut Maker. There's a facility to do that and it prints them for me on cardstock or whatever I want to print them on and then it will cut all the way around of it. It does the fussy cutting for me. That in itself is the price of a Cricut Maker I think right there that makes it worth spending the money on it. So then you can see I sort of I, I didn't really do a thematic uh, scheme although I did sort of keep the graphics somewhat the same like you have these little angels in here and there were some cards. He also had some journaling cards in his digi download set in one of them. So I just added that on top of this page because the background here is a little bit darker for writing on. I think this is from his Regency collection. So I'm sort of mixing, I think, his Cupid collection and his Regency collection and using these as cards. So you can see what I was doing all the way through this set of signatures. Um, this was also a great way for me to use some of his stencils. I had quite a few of them piled up that were still in the original packaging and I hadn't got around to using them yet. So I used all the new stencils that I had piled up in this particular journal. Um, to stick a lot of these things down, I did not use glue. I used, as I mentioned before, my Xyrum, but I used it on these bigger sheets, but I used it on these as well and I even used it I have several Xyrons in different sizes and I also used it for the angels. Now the one problem with using a Xyron is there's always a little uh, overlap of glue which can make your pages stick together but I used a little um, little thing I've had for years I don't know what you call it but it's full of tal talcum powder and has a little brush on the end and you just tap it around and it absorbs the uh, glue that might be hanging out here and now your pages don't stick together. And so this is my last section. Now you may wonder why my tabs go this way. One up here, then this one for the middle section down here. You'd expect this one to be a middle section, but I needed room to tie the ribbon so that it didn't crush the tab. So that's why it's there. Now the thing about these different uh, signatures is, and here you can see I used one of his little tickets. Again, all digi downloads. And uh, what I'm saying is one of the advantages of this kind of journal, which is in the style of a traveler's notebook, is that if I fill up a signature, I can simply pull it out. Let me show you. And I'm sure you've seen this style before. This is not my invention, of course. But you see, I can just slide it right out from under the elastic strap and put in a new one or if I've got a note or something I can just fold it up tick it, and stick it in underneath the band. Now each one of these signatures I took to my sewing machine and I stitched them to hold them together but you could do this in hand stitching or whatever. Um, you don't even need to necessarily stitch them if you don't want to. If you're going to be putting things in and taking things out a lot but you don't want to take out the whole signature you could just leave them loose. But I like uh, sewing them together because it just keeps them more even. Um, they're not crooked. And so there's the, the end of the journal. I think it turned out very nice. And as I said, everything is made from Mike Deacon products. So if you want to support Mike right now during his very difficult time, my suggestion to you is to check out his shop and look at the items he has for sale and maybe purchase a few things. They're not expensive, the shipping is reasonable, and they're high quality. So, here's to you, Mike.